In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can create this deer's head and outline and place this onto the uh, crest of a signet ring. So the very first thing that I would do with this is to come up with a drawing that would be a reliable starting point uh, for me to work from in ZBrush. And there's a number of ways you could do that. You could um, create uh, some geometry using T-splines. Uh, you could create uh, drawing in Photoshop. I'm going to go for um, a route that is pretty reliable as far as I'm concerned, which is to do it in Illustrator. And that's because I like the pen tool in Illustrator. So I'm just going to open up Illustrator here. And to get started, I will create a new document. This is, uh, this is scale agnostic, really. So um, I am just going to create sort of a default square size document here. It does not matter what size it is. And to bring this image into Illustrator, I'm going to place it in Illustrator. So I'll go to File, Place, and I will find uh, the image in question, which was your head. There we go. Um, and I can leave it at about this size. Uh, I, might, I might want to scale it down a little bit. So there we go. Okay. So uh, depending on your familiarity with Illustrator, uh, I'll just go through a couple of tools and explain how I'm using them. And if this is uh, <laughs> boring to you, I apologize. What I'm going to do first is uh, create a new layer, and I'm going to go ahead and lock the uh, the deer head layer here. I'll rename this <clears throat> just so I remember what's on what layer. And I'll call this, I'll double click on here and type in outlines. All right. Now, um, as I am constructing here in Illustrator, I'm going to use the pen tool. Uh, the pen tool gives me great uh, Bezier curve flexibility to trace around this image. And if I just draw a basic shape to begin with, you'll notice that I have a black outline with a white fill on it. And the black outline is fine. The white fill, however, not so fine. So down here in my um, uh, color pickers, I have uh, this sort of uh, black outline. kind of looks like the frame of, an image, frame of a, a picture. And that indicates the color of the stroke. And the white indicates the color of the fill. Um, I, I want to keep the black uh, stroke. And if you don't have black there, then you can simply uh, click on that, double click on it. You can select a color to work from. I'll make it fully black. And for white here, for this, for this fill, I'm going to change this so that it is, in fact, uh, no fill at all. And that I can just do by clicking on this little sort of white box with a red slash on it and that will change it to nothing. All right, so no fill, but there is still a stroke. And you can see that there. Okay, so I'm going to cl click on that and delete it. And I'll get rid of a couple of these menus. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna hold down uh, the space bar so I can grab and move in here. And I'm just gonna start in any old area. I'm really, for the purposes of this demo, just going to focus on the deer's head, but you could also extend this to uh, apply to the outer image of, you know, this uh, outer circle of the image here. So um, pen tool selected again, shortcut for that is just P. And I'll start right here. The idea when working in the pen tool in Illustrator is to try to create the fewest number of points as possible and to just make good use of the Bezier controls uh, between the points so that the, the program does most of the interpolation of the curve for you. As it's similar in many ways if you were creating um, curves in, in Rhino and presumably in Matrix as well, though I'm not a Matrix user. So I'm just going to click and drag out. So this uh, drags out some tangent handles from the anchor point that I just created there. And I'm just going to try to find places where there is an, a natural uh, sort of change in direction. And so if I just kind of click and drag out again, you'll see that this naturally sort of changes along that way. And I, and I try to point the, um, uh, the tangent handle down uh, the direction in which the curve continues to flow. If I at one point want to change uh, what one of these tangent handles is doing, I can always go back so long as the pen tool is still enabled. And uh, in this case, hold down the Alt key. And I get my little, uh, I call this the caret tool. 
uh, what it does is it allows you to change the um, how, how the uh, tangent handle is being interpolated at that point. So I could just make it a little bit straighter through there. And the good thing is that these points are uh, very capable of being moved later on. Um, so if I keep on drawing here to create a few points, I might not even need a point there. See, I'm going to try to get away with as few number of points as possible. Um, also, I do kind of keep in mind, though, that if I have really, really large magnitude, uh, this distance here of my anchor, or of my tangent handle, sorry, um, that can cause a problem if I try to then go into sort of tighter areas uh, where there's a, a, a quicker change in direction. So in this case, it's not so bad, um, but if I get into some of these smaller areas, I might need to pull these this magnitude back a little bit. All right, I'll just try to do this quickly now that I don't have to talk as much. Ultimately, I'm not too concerned about this being 100% precise because I can change things later on. Here's a good example where there's a little bit of a, a quick change in direction. So I'm just going to put a point right here. And then I'm going to pull back the, uh, while I'm holding down the Alt key, basically, let me just create that point again. I've pulled out here. And I've not let go of the left mouse button yet. While still holding down the left mouse button, I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And then I can just drag this back a bit. And that way I can quickly and easily change the direction of uh, this next point that I draw out. So let's create a point there. Cool. And continue on. Probably a little bit too quick of a change of direction there. Okay. So um, ultimately, uh, it's probably smart if I am to uh, kind of pause the video here because uh, what I'm going to do is is just go around the the image um, and finish it off. Uh, and if I, if I start to think that there's any part of the image that needs to be uh, elaborated upon in terms of what I'm doing with the pen tool, then I'll, I'll do that. But I presume I'll just be able to get all the way around this image and not have to waste your time showing you how I did that. All right, so I'm just going to pause the video for now. Okay, as you can see here, I've uh, worked my way around the outline of the deer's head so far. I'm just about to finish off the bottom part. Um, I did have a couple ideas as I was going through, things that I might want to show just in case you're not entirely familiar with all of uh, illustrator's tools. For instance, as you are drawing, if you decide that you want to change the location of any one of these anchor points because you didn't draw it out correctly, uh, you can do that very easily. There, You need to go into the direct selection tool, which is the uh, little white arrow tool here. The hotkey for that is A. Um, and this is different from the regular selection tool. Regular selection tool, the black arrow, selects the entire object. And so it's sort of an object level selection whereas the direct selection tool uh, is a component level selection. So it allows you to, instead of selecting the entire object, to select individual components. So I can drag a selection around any one part here. And now I can click and drag that and reposition that particular point. Um, also, if you have been drawing and you all of a sudden click off of your uh, curve, and you want to connect to it again, very simple. All you need to do is just simply click at the last point that you were drawing from, and you will start drawing from that curve again. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, very quickly finish off this. Now, one thing that you might have noticed as you looked at this is that I have basically, um, I'll show you up here. Um, I basically stayed to the outline of the actual metal, leaving behind uh, on the inside sort of the, the stag um, horns and whatnot. Uh, that's my impression of how I should proceed with this. However, if you are trying to be a little bit more uh, just, uh, shall I say, more specific, I guess, um, you could go in there and uh, just follow along the horns themselves. My thought is I'm going to go in there, I'm going to create a very similar design to this, and I'm just going to, in ZBrush, uh, sort of paint these in or sculpt these lines in. So really I'm just kind of creating an outline at the moment to work from in ZBrush. Um, I like this method because it's fast. Uh, here's a good example where I need to pull the magnitude down. There we go. 
again, just holding that down the Alt key and clicking uh, and dragging there. And here's another instance where I need to change the direction. So, all right. Uh, so let's just pull that down, change the direction there. Okay, and then just coming to the end here, um, you need to close off the curve. So if you hover over the first point that you drew, you see within the pen tool now there's this little circle next to the pen tool indicating that if you click right there, this is going to create a closed curve. I'm just going to do that real quick, and there we go. So pretty darn good. If I were to go into my layers palette, just this, this icon here to open up the layers palette, uh, and I turn off the visibility on the deer head, this is what I'm left behind with. So it doesn't look like too much at the moment. Um, I am going to probably go in a fairly simple method working with this. There's a couple different ways that I might um, normally work. One is where I go through and I try to create a grayscale image of um, sort of like a, a, kind of like a height field in a way, I guess, uh, depending on what software you're in, where I just kind of go through and I, and I draw out certain features on here and I let the um, uh, I, I try to create a sense of, um, you know, this would be lighter here because this is more uh, pushed out and this would be darker here. Now that that's fine. You can do that. It takes a bit of time, um, but it can give you a fairly reasonable result quite quickly. In this other instance, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to uh, basically fill uh, this particular area um, with, with white and everything else with black. And uh, I could do that in Illustrator if I wanted to, but I'm going to end up needing a, uh, a bitmap image anyway. So I'm just going to uh, save this real quick. So I'll say File, Save As, and I'll save this as uh, Deer Outline. Um, I think it's probably best if I create a folder for myself here. So we'll call this uh, Deer Head, and I'll save that in there. So Save. Okay, um, and that's all fine for me. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do then, um, and I'll do this in, well, I'll, I'll just do it in the end of this video here. Um, I'll open up Photoshop. And let me just resize that to fit our screen here. Because these are both Adobe software, uh, the files work pretty interchangeably. So I'll just go to File, Open. I'll go find our Deer Head and Deer Outline. Double click on that. It's going to ask me how I want to rasterize this. I'll just take the default um, options. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I will go into my adjustment layers and I will create a solid color adjustment. And I'll just set that to uh, black. This is going to be my, my background. Put that below here. And let's turn that off for a second. Now I'll go into my um, magic wand tool. If I just click inside uh, the deer outline, I'll now get a selection that matches uh, the outline that I've drawn there. I don't need to keep the deer outline itself. I'm just going to uh, turn off the visibility of that. So I'll turn this back on so we can see that again. I'll create a new um, adjustment layer, new solid color, and I'll set this to white. And there we go. So uh, this is going to be our bitmap image that we work from in ZBrush and this will be projecting this. Um, and what I'm just going to do is I'll go to image, image size. Uh, it does not need to be 300 pixels per inch, that's for sure. So I'll change that to 72 pixels per inch. Um, ideally, when you are working in ZBrush, uh, if you're going to do any kind of projection, you would want your image to be square and in some multiple of two in terms of its size. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set this uh, to 1024 by 1024. Uh, I'll set the height to 1024 in this case, and then I'll adjust the width afterwards, and I'll just hit OK. So 1024, of course, being a multiple of 2. Um, that is 2 to the 10th power, I believe. Um, and if I go to Image Canvas Size here, now this way I can adjust the width as well to become 1024. And there we go. And also, is there anything else I want to do before I uh, save out of this? I'm going to change my mode uh, to grayscale. This just uh, tends to make things a little bit better for ZBrush. So I'll just say merge. 
and I'll discard any color information. And uh, I will now just save this out, save as. I'm going to save it out. Um, I could save it as a PSD file, but there's no really re there's no reason to because there's no layers left. Uh, so I'm just going to save it out as a ping. So uh, do, 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 do. find a PNG. Here we are. Okay, and we'll call this our dear alpha. All right, that's saved. And I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, we will take a look at um, bringing this into ZBrush and projecting it.